Hey y'all, Shade Tree Joe here. Uh, today we're gonna go ahead and delve into some issues with uh, the transmission in Kimmy's Jimmy. This thing's set for a while with the hood off and uh, after doing some burnouts, I went ahead and checked the transmission fluid, which is something I should have done first. Uh, I mean, I, I added fluid to it to see if it could go ahead and pull a while back and it does. And so then test drove it, but I never, Pulled the transmission pan and changed the fluid and so like everything else it had rainwater in it and so we're gonna go ahead and flush all that nastiness out and uh, hopefully we can salvage this transmission for a while at least that's the plan okay so Kimmy's Jimmy set for a long time with the hood off uh, exposed to the elements and I had my suspicions about contamination having gotten into the transmission oil. Um, the transmission dipstick still had, it's one of the older ones, so it had like a little loose stamp steel cap that went over the dipstick tube and then a, a rubber plug at the top of it. And of course, you know, rubber plug wears out over time, so on and so forth. But uh, this one was missing the steel cap and then the rubber the rubber plug was tore up and it was seated down in the transmission dipstick tube a little bit deeper than it would have been if the cap had been on so as a consequence however long this thing sat with the hood off it was constantly getting rainwater uh creeping down into the transmission pan now when i picked the truck up and it sat here for a year um, it, it was leaking out the bottom end by the speedometer adapter. And so when I went ahead and, and brought the truck up and started messing with the motor, it didn't really have any transmission oil in it to uh, show on the dipstick to let me know that there was any sort of problem going on. But again, I had my suspicions. When I went ahead, I topped the transmission up and started driving it around a little bit. Um, it, it's working. I mean, it, it's working fine. It goes ahead and shifts through the gears. Uh, I took it down the street this morning at uh, first, second drive, all work, reverse, it's a little slow to go, but it works. And after coming back, I went ahead and pulled the dipstick back out and it's got the pink kind of Pepto-Bismol melted strawberry shake looking stuff going on. So I already anticipated this. I already bought a, uh, a pan gasket to filter. And so I'm gonna go drop the pan and filter. We'll do that and then I'll go ahead and flush the transmission out. I'm gonna have to get some more fluid, but we can start it up and run it through and, and pump it through the torque converter and at least clean it out as much as possible. I mean, I don't know how much damage has been done. I mean, obviously it runs and drives right now, but you know, next week, probably not so much. You know, there's only one way to find out. Uh, that being said, uh, when this transmission does go tits up, uh, it's gonna get replaced with a 700R4. Um, because this is a long shaft turbo 350, that means we have to get a new drive shaft built. Uh, and, and, and I gotta go ahead and do the uh, wiring for the 700R4. But overdrive with this 307 rear end will be really nice to have. And 700R4 has got a lower first gear anyway. So that'll help launch and offset the, uh, the uh, rear end gearing. And it should get halfway decent fuel mileage for a half ton pickup truck, carbureted half ton pickup truck. That. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get underneath this thing and start uh, cleaning up what Mother Nature has created. Uh, there's the waterfall. You can see how nasty that stuff is. So yeah, there was a lot of water in that transmission and um, I'm going to have to deal with that too. But uh, hopefully I uh, got this before the transmission has been completely destroyed. Okay, so the transmission pan's dropped, uh, fluid's drained, and we'll see how long it lasts. <laughs> That's all there is to it. Uh, the bottom of the pan is primordial ooze. It is nasty. Look at that nastiness. I mean, it's like algae over here. The big gooey stuff looks like algae. And then you've got the milkshake. There's some water right there. 
Okay, so I'm guessing that's probably clutch algae. Because, you know, it's just uh, fucking disgusting. What a mess. Yeah, like I said, we'll see how long it lasts, but I don't have much hope for this one. Okay, I went and I got a putty knife because you just cannot believe this shit. This is just some nastiness. Get over here so I'm not casting a shadow. Look at that. That is just... There's clearly some water there. I mean, look at that big old water spot. And somehow this thing ran in drove. You tell me. I mean, good gosh. I wonder if this shit's metallic or not. A magnet. Well, duh, the putty knife. You dip. You're such a retard. Yep, it's reacting to the magnet. That's metal. That's metal from the steel plates. Okay. You ready for some more disgusting crap? Take a look at what was on top of this filter. There it is. <laughs> There's the transmission filter. Uh, obviously it was doing its job, but holy crap. What a mess. Said. I don't have, hold out much hope for this transmission, but uh, it was moving. It was pulling forward, reverse. It smoked tires, so obviously it's not completely dead yet. I think you can safely say that fluid was contaminated. Uh, contaminated in a bad way. Yeah, the, the good news is that it's not the radiator. It's definitely the, uh, the rainwater that got down inside of it. But, uh, yeah. <sighs> well, like I said, we'll see how long it lives. Yeah, the Honda that I had, I went ahead and flushed the uh, coolant out of it because it did have a coolant leak from the uh, radiator to the transmission. I flushed that thing out and, shoot, I put 10,000 miles on it. It was still going strong when the uh, motor gave out. So, yeah, it, it, it can be saved. It's just a matter of, uh, uh, well... <laughs> Time will tell. Okay, so as you saw earlier in the video, uh, the transmission, is, the fluid that's in it's contaminated, and we're going to go ahead and flush it out. And by flushing, I'm not talking about doing some high pressure, blah, blah, blah. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and keep filling uh, fresh oil into the transmission with the engine idling and let it go ahead and pump through so it's cleaning out the torque converter or at least as much as it can and replacing it with fresher fluid and eventually we'll have reasonably fresh fluid in it. I've done this before uh, well in a similar manner with a Honda and it worked pretty well. Uh, in that particular car it was a matter of going ahead and uh, replacing the old fluid with fresh fluid uh, time and time again rather than actually running a, a having the engine running and actually flushing it out with the uh, the pump. I already replaced the fluid. One more time in English. I have not replaced the fluid yet. I have already replaced the filter and the pan gasket. That's all nice and fresh and sealed up. I cleaned that mess out as best as I could without dropping the valve body. Hopefully this will save the transmission for a little while. I know it's not long for this world, but it'd be nice to get a few more burnouts and some miles on it before uh, we go ahead and upgrade to the 700 R4 and have to have a new drive shaft built. So anyway, that's where we're at. Okay, and since I do not know which line does what uh, coming into the transmission cooler at the radiator, I went ahead and I hooked up a brass fitting up here at the top port with a hose on it. The drain hose is gonna come out through the hole in the bottom of the fender into this nasty pan right here. 
on the other side, the line coming from the transmission or going to, depending on which way it flows, I'm gonna go ahead and take this piece of uh, 3 8 hose, put it on there with a clamp, run that to a separate pan, and I should be able to at least, number one, know which way it's, it's flowing, and number two, I'll go ahead and, and catch the fluid coming out and we can start uh, to get a decent look of uh, how the old fluid's coming out and the new fluid's going in, you know, kind of like flushing your brakes. So that's what we're gonna do with this. Okay, so here we are, we've got the other pan set up. <laughs> got the piston in there, old piston in there, just go ahead and hold it down, hold the line down so it doesn't go ahead and start uh, shooting stuff every which way. The other line's already got a curve into it to point it into the bottom of the bucket rather than the top. So we'll go ahead and we'll put fresh fluid in this thing. I'm just gonna use hydraulic uh, tractor oil for right now to flush it out because it's cheaper. And then we'll go ahead and put some actual transmission oil back in once it's looking much better. Okay, so my other thought on this part of the process is that, I, and I don't know if it works this way, but there's only one way to find out is that if I take the return side hose and stick that in the jug, if the pump will actually go ahead and, and draw fluid rather than just push it out the, uh, the outlet side. So I, I don't think it works that way, but if it does, that'll save me some time and effort having to go ahead and dump in a couple quarts of transmission oil at a time. But either way, I mean, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. No harm lost. Okay, so we learned that this right here is the return outlet. And so when the engine's running, transmission fluid comes in through the bottom from the pump, runs up through the top, and then comes back out this line here, which goes into that hard line, which then goes back into the transmission. So when this motor's running, it's gonna go ahead and circulate the transmission oil. And He'll go ahead and flush it through the pump, through the torque converter, through the transmission cooler, and then out into this pan right here. Unfortunately, there's not any draw on the other side where I've got the other pan set up to actually go ahead and pull fluid from a fresh jug. Now, if I had a, uh, a setup where I'd go ahead and gravity feed it, um, you know, another funnel set up and then go ahead and run transmission oil into that. I could gravity feed it back in on the return side and just keep going and let the engine run. Ideally, this would be done with a warm engine, warm transmission, but right now it's just a matter of going ahead and getting it flushed out. There we are. This is the third time now. And you can see we're still getting nastiness out of it. It's not as bad as it was, not as dark as it was, but it's still not very clean. Uh, unfortunately, I am out of tractor oil at this point, and tractor supply company's not open because it's 4th of July. Happy Independence Day, everybody. Uh, I think I'm going to have to probably hit up Walmart, get a couple of more expensive gallons of the Dexron Mercon to finish flushing this thing out. And of course, it's gonna have to be run for a little bit and flush some more to make sure we get it all out or as much as we can, assuming the transmission is actually gonna live. So there's that. This batch actually did have some transmission oil in it now. And you can see we're starting to go ahead and get nice uh, red coloring to it. So that's a start. Oh, here we go. And we're blowing air again.
halfway decent. It goes right into reverse, it goes right into drive. So all's left now is go ahead and set it down, check the fluid level one more time. But I think we're probably good. We managed to save it for now. Okay, so obviously there's still gonna be some remnants of the hydraulic tractor oil in the transmission. It's not gonna hurt it. Uh, Folks have been substituting transmission fluid with hydraulic tractor oil for some time now. Oh, okay. Uh, folks have been submit, or substituting uh, hydraulic tractor oil for transmission oil for a while now. Uh, it's essentially the same stuff. Uh, you know, trans, or tractor oil is a little bit thicker, not by much, and it doesn't have the red coloring. Uh, th there's all sorts of controversy all over the internet about it. The reality of it is that it's probably at this point about 90% transmission oil and 10% hydraulic tractor oil. And this transmission is probably not going to last that long anyway. If it does, great. If it doesn't, you know, I haven't lost anything. I've saved a couple dollars anyway, uh, substituting one for the other while I was flushing the uh, uh, contaminated fluid out. So anyhow, we're going to take it for a test drive and we'll go from there. Shifts through the gears just fine. It also comes up into reverse a lot quicker than it did. I can't imagine why that would be. But uh, I have to drive it around a little bit and see how it works. Take a look at the fluid again because I'm sure there's going to be some more contamination that needs to come out. But overall, I think it's in pretty good shape. Alright y'all, so that's going to go ahead and do it for today. Uh, clearly uh, it's working good so far and uh, I want to wish you all a uh, safe and fun Independence Day. Happy Fourth of July. Uh, thought it was kind of interesting when you stop and think about it. We went to war and left a country because we didn't want to go ahead and pay tax on tea because we didn't have uh, representation in our home country. Here we are, all these years later, we're paying taxes on everything, including tea. And do we really have any rep representation now as a citizen? I don't think we do. That's just me. I mean, I, I think that our elected officials, once they get into office, they figure out, well, hey, in order to get reelected, I need to go ahead and play ball with the... Uh, people that are paying the bills and that would be this corporation that corporation so on and so forth and they forget that we were the ones that put them in office and we forget that you know we were the ones that put them in office so anyway enough of that soapbox have a good one be safe be good to each other and we'll see you on the next go around we'll see you like share subscribe and again i am not monetized in any way shape or form nobody sponsors me to do this i just do it for the fun We'll see y'all be good.